If you've been following this channel for a while, you know that one of the things about my car I am the most proud of is how little it weighs. And when I was at Roebling Road, I was able to get a proper corner scale on the car and see just how much it weighs with me in the driver's seat and a full tank of gas. And this is the result. So we got 2,960 pounds with me in the car, full tank of gas, and as you can see, the only problem is our corner weights are definitely not where I want them to be. So the front to rear bias isn't that bad. It's 5347, which is the factory spec. So to lose 500 pounds of weight from the car and still be in factory front to rear balance, that's pretty good. I'm really proud of that. To give you an idea of how much the car actually weighs, if you take me out at about 180, 185 pounds with all my gear on and half the tank of gas, which is how you get a proper curb weight, and then I had the center console still in. If you took all of that out, the car would probably be somewhere in the low 2700 range, so like 2720, 2730, if you're gonna have an actual curb weight of the car, which is conveniently 500 pounds less than the factory curb weight, which I think was 3,230 pounds, something like that. So we've definitely taken a ton of weight out of the car. But as you can see, that right rear corner is much lighter than especially like the left front corner which is a difference of 140 pounds, which is pretty significant. So my goal is to add some ballast to the car to try and balance that out as much as I possibly can. So what I'm gonna to try to do is add about 70 pounds of ballast to the car to see if I can balance it out a little bit more than it is now. I'm gonna try and put about 45 to 50 pounds near the right rear corner and another 25 pounds in the area where the passenger seat is supposed to go. That should help balance out the front two tires and the rear two tires. Because your car is not solid mounted and is not static, it's on springs, as you add weight, it's going to shift other weight in the car. So by adding 45 pounds to the right rear, I'm gonna take some weight off of the left rear. It's gonna make the car lean a little bit. So I might lose five or 10 pounds off that left rear, bringing it down to 720. Adding the 45 pounds to the right rear is gonna bring it up to around 705, maybe even 710 once you factor in the lean. I'm really just making a guess at what is going to work the best. We'll put it back in the corner scales at Road Atlanta and see how it works out. I wanna just get it as close as I possibly can to a proper left and right balance. So I want the left side and the right side to be equal, which is really difficult once you add in 180 pounds of driver on the left side. So originally I wanted to do lead ballast. I wanted to buy some scrap lead, melt it down. I can cast my own weights using cooking pots or it's really easy to make your own lead ballast. Problem is it's difficult to find lead because people don't use lead anymore. It's not environmentally friendly so they're trying to phase it out. So once I finally gave up on finding some lead I decided it would just be easier to get some exercise plates off of Craigslist and I was able to find these. So it's a 45 pound plate. This one is gonna go into passenger side rear somewhere near that strut tower. And then I have a 25 pound plate that's going to be going in the passenger seat area. The way that NASA wants these mounted is they want grade five hardware. It has to be three eighths of an inch in diameter. You're going to need to use fender washers and locking nuts. So some sort of nylon nut or a jam nut, something to make sure that this is never going to come undone and cause some sort of injury or accident when it does. They want one bolt per every 15 pounds of weight. So for the 45 pound plate, I'm gonna need three. And for the 25 pound plate, I'm gonna need two. Now be strategic with this. A 35 pound plate is going to be really annoying. You're gonna have to drill three holes through about one to two inches of cast iron, which is not easy to do. Where if you use a 30 pound plate, you're gonna need two or a 45 point, you're gonna need three. So try to use in increments of 15 if you can to have the most efficient number of holes drilled because that's gonna be the biggest difficulty with this is drilling through these plates. So with that, let's start drilling. Now that we have the holes drilled, I have to figure out where I want to place the ballast in the car. So I know that the rear wheel is the lightest, but that doesn't mean I just want to pile 75 pounds of weight in the rear corner of the car. I want to try to distribute it a little bit, and I also do not want to put it super far back. I want it to be over the rear axle. If I put too much weight behind the rear axle, it's really going to be bad for weight distribution because while I will have equal weight on all four wheels, I'm going to have the 45 pound plate and the ballast 
battery back behind the rear wheels, it's gonna act like a pendulum. I don't want that. So I'm gonna try and tuck this 45 pound plate up against that little bulkhead there. But you have to check to make sure that once you drill through, do you have the ability to get to the back of that sheet metal to put on your nut and washer? Because if you can't, you just drilled a hole in your car that you can't use. So double check, try to look under the car, drill a pilot hole first, so that if you do, it's only an eighth inch hole and not a three eighths of an inch hole. We're gonna be using grade five hardware. It's gonna be three eighths of an inch in diameter. You have to use large fender washers on the top and bottom and you have to use nylon lock nuts. I'm probably gonna use a jam nut as well because I really don't want a 45 pound plank come flying loose if I hit a wall. So once I figure out where I'm gonna mount it, I'm going to use just one of the random bolts I have in my garage to figure out the exact length of bolt I want or how much room I have to get the bolt in from the bottom of the car. I really don't want to spend a bunch of money on grade five hardware that I can't use. So this isn't something you're gonna do overnight. Take your time with this project. Don't waste money, do it right the first time. So I'm gonna check under the car, see where I can get this plate, and then I'm gonna start drilling some pilot holes. So I just took a peek under the car, and I know that where this bolt has been added to hold down my battery box, I can see where that goes through the bottom of the floor, and I know that I can only go over two or three inches before I'm going to have to leave enough room for the fender washer before there's a little cross beam right here that I cannot get to the inside of. So that lines up with this little line right here which is where the spare tire was held down. So that makes sense that there's some bracing here. On the other side of that, this is the rear differential. It's down here, right in the middle. So I do have room above that. I just have to make sure I don't drill into any place where the subframe mounts. So I'm gonna start with the plate about here. I want it lined up. Eventually we're gonna paint it white so that it blends in and doesn't look like this big ugly old plate. But first I'm gonna drill a hole right here in the back of the plate. Then I'm gonna drill these two front holes and see where the drill bit comes down and make sure that that's a good spot for it to be mounted. If everything lines up and looks neat and nice, we can measure for our bolts and then we can go to the hardware store and pick up some grade five stuff. <laughs> Pulling the drill bit out of a drill, I can place it down in the hole and that'll make it a lot easier for me to find where the hole came out on the other side. So I'm going to do that on the other two positions and then measure for our hole. So this is exactly where everything is going to go. This is behind that rear brace. These two are in front of it. This one is just over the rear subframe, but I still have plenty of room to get a nut down there. So I just have to make sure the bolt is not too long and it's hitting the subframe. Over here, we're good, we're out of way of everything. The spring perch is off to one side, the gas net goes over here closer to that brace. So with a little bit of measuring and looking at it and a little bit of forethought, you can get this right the first time. You can avoid having to do this multiple times, drilling a bunch of holes in your car, or maybe even drilling down into the fuel neck. If I drilled over here, we might have drilled into the fuel neck. You don't want to do that. So there's a lot of things you can avoid by giving just a little bit of forethought. The 25 pound plate in the front is going to be a little bit more difficult. Ideally, I want to put it just a little bit more forward here over the fuel tank, but there's really no good place to put it. The passenger seat area is not flat. There's not really a good spot to drill holes that I can get to from the bottom. So I'm not really sure where I'm going to add the extra 25 pounds. If I could drop the fuel tank, I could put it up here above the fuel tank, but the fuel tank sits so close to the bottom of the car that I cannot get underneath it to get the work done. So I really don't want to do that. I'm definitely not going to drop the fuel tank just to add 25 pounds of ballast to the car. So we'll see what I can figure out or what I can get to work, but we will get it mounted. But for now, we're going to focus on this 45 pound plate because if that's all I get in, that should help our weight distribution a good amount anyway. As you might have noticed, I had three different drill bits. They were almost all the same exact size. They were 1 16th apart, but I drilled this hole first, put the drill bit in it. Drilled this hole, left the drill bit in it. Drilled this hole with the third drill bit, so that way this didn't wobble or move. It kept it exactly where it was. So you can check for bolt length with any bolt that you have. I conveniently had this M6 bolt that's pretty long. So I was able to check it on all three spots. Let's check it on this last one here. So remember, you have to account for two fender washers and it has to be tall enough for the nylon lock nut to actually engage the nylon and start tightening it down and hold it in place. If you wanna do a jam nut, you're gonna to have to add enough room for two nuts on there. This one 
is conveniently the perfect length, so it's just long enough to go down and not touch the top of the subframe. I have still about a half inch of clearance, and it's going to work for all these other spaces as well. It'll go through the plate, through the floor, the two fender washers, and have enough room for the nylon lock nut. So this is the length I'm going to go off of. I'm going to go check it on one of my rulers, see how long it is. I'm going to be using standard hardware on here. So if you're going to use metric, it's grade 10.9, but for standard, it's grade 5. It's going to be a little bit cheaper and easier for me to get locally than it would be to get metric bolts. And after measuring this, it is 3 inches long. So we know what we need for this plate. Now we need to find a place for the 25-pound plate, figure out how long those bolts need to be and where they're going to attach, and then we can go to the hardware store. It's finally time to mount the ballast in the car. I've got the two rear mounting points already done. You can see the large fender washers we use. And this is the hardware that we'll be using. It's 3 eighths of an inch in diameter, 3 inches long. You've got the fine thread because it's a grade 5, the large 2 inch fender washers, and a nylon lock nut. You can tell it's grade 5 because it's got three little hash marks on the top. If it was grade 8, it'd have five hash marks. Don't ask me why grade 8 doesn't have 8 and grade 5 doesn't have 5. It's just the way it is. Make sure you, when you're putting this in the car, you have it oriented properly. So these two rear holes are a little bit closer together than these two, and these two are much wider. So I just had to make sure I had it oriented properly so all the holes will line up perfectly. So put those in. So now I'll go down from the underside with our nut and our washer, and I'll use the impact, tighten everything down and it'll be mounted in the car and we'll be good to go. And that's all it takes to mount ballast to your car. So you're gonna need the proper hardware and a little bit of strategy on where you're going to place it. I'm actually really excited to see the final numbers to see what our corner weights actually are. Here is a rough guess of what I think everything is gonna turn out to be. So it is not an exact science like I mentioned earlier. So I think the front two wheels are gonna have almost the exact weight. I say they're definitely gonna be within 10 pounds. They might even be within five pounds of each other. The rear wheels, I'd be happy if they got within 10 pounds. Because I'm putting 70 pounds in the rear corner and it's going to be over or around the rear wheel, I'm expecting to take a little bit of weight off the front of the car and put a little bit extra on that back corner as the suspension starts to particulate. I have no idea how much of that is actually going to happen. It's only 70 pounds on the car but weighs almost 3,000 pounds with the driver in it. So our total curb weight when we get to Road Atlanta should be around 3,030 pounds with the driver and a full tank of gas and if it turns out like these numbers I'll have approximately a 52% front bias which really isn't bad it's still better than stock and still way lighter than stock and there's the fact that the two front wheels and two rear wheels will almost carry the same weight on either side so it should make the car a lot more balanced a lot easier to drive and a lot more predictable if you look on the top left corner of the screen, you can see where I added the 25 pound weight. That's right where the passenger side seat belt originally mounted. So I know that area has a lot of structural integrity. It's gonna be a really strong area. It's designed to hold a seat belt load so I can definitely hold that weight. I couldn't really get a good place where the passenger seat was to mount it. It's a really uneven section of the floor and there's not a lot of good access to it underneath. So I chose that area instead. It's a little bit higher up in the chassis than I wanted it to be, but it's also a little bit further back. So it's a compromise I was willing to make for ease of installation. The roll bars, I'm really happy with how this turned out. All the weight only cost me $35 and then the hardware was about 10 bucks to get the nice grade five stuff. If that's all it takes to get me a nice even weight distribution on all four corners, I would be super happy with that. I'm so excited to take this car Road Atlanta because number one it did amazing at Roebling the last time we were there and number two it should be even better this time. If you have any questions or comments drop them below hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys next week.